What's going on, everybody? We're back here for another live stream. Missed y'all yesterday, but we're going to go every day uh, for the next couple of days at 12 o'clock. So thanks for tuning in. Um, sorry about the background noise. There's like leaf blowers, whatever, but the show must go on. The show must go on. So uh, let's get started with uh, just general crypto markets. There we go. Got Bitcoin is at 17,000. It's been staying above 17,000 uh, pretty well lately. Um, my take is that in order for it to go hit that 11K and pray, there's a few things that would have to happen. I think like the possibilities are big, big crypto institutions going out of business or being insolvent and having to go under. So right now, the big ones that people are looking at are Coinbase, Digital Currency Group. I actually have an article. We have time to discuss that later. And then there's Tether. And yeah, so Digital Currency Group includes Genesis and uh, and Grayscale. So we'll see how that happens. We'll see how that plays out. Tether seems at least protected for the time being, like still been refusing audits. They paid a couple fines. So I don't know. That might just have to, the can might just get kicked down the road for Tether. But uh, that's that for Bitcoin at uh, 17,000. Will it hit 11K and pray? December 20th is the, would be the long, if, if we go to December 20th, um, that would be, and, and then we make a lower low after, that would be the longest bear market in the four-year cycle. So do you guys think that we are going to see the cycles lengthen? Or do you think if, uh, let's say, December 20th comes and we're still at 17,000, does that mean that, you know, 15 and a half thousand was the bottom and it's only smooth sailing from here? That's a big question. Some food for thought. But anyways, let's move on. We got Hex at 2.9 cents. Uh, past two days have been red. Up a little bit. Uh, hope you bought the dip. Are we going to that one penny? That's the question. Um, the big the big thing people say is that Hex really front runs crypto, which front runs stocks, which front runs real estate, because what we've seen is Hex made all time highs when Bitcoin, when Bitcoin and Ethereum were down like 50, 55, 60 percent. And then uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum then made new all time highs and then the bear market came in. So is the Hex bottom already in? Does the Hex price still front run the broader crypto markets just a bigger look at the crypto bubbles chart got bitcoin is up 2.9 percent kucoin's been getting wrecked every single uh every single day i guess because people really think they're insolvent phantom's been doing very well lately yeah i think uh xrp is a little bit down the market's overall a little bit up but uh sunday there's really not much trading volume so that's that. Uh, let's get on with Hex Daily Stats. I like checking Hex Daily Stats every day. Make sure you're checking Hex Daily Stats. We got 36 new holders yesterday. Yester, uh, t- yesterday, the day before, was actually a red day, so we had we lost 131. But there has not been a net decrease in uh, current stakers in a very long time which is awesome. So we got 35 new stakers yesterday and 268 the day before. So it is a little reflexive. So you're going to have these days where, you know, generally the trend is up in terms of uh, current holders and stakers. More and more people are being onboarded to Hex, but it's reflexive. So when the chart goes up a lot, retraces and goes up more, or at least that's the way it's seeming right now. Uh, We got 11 watching. What's up, everyone? Uh, we got Entheo, Entheo Sapien. He is a regular. Thank you for tuning in, man. Uh, I think we can hit 11 K without Coinbase going down. Does something else have to go down to meaning let's say DGC goes down or let's say, um, Tether goes down or is it just going to go to 11 K with no news? That's the question. And footsteps. Nice catch you. Li- nice to catch you live. Nice to catch you live too. Thank you for tuning in. 
appreciate it always. But uh, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. First thing I wanted to talk about is the big thing that's been happening was Richard Hart and Elon Musk were together in a Twitter space. And Richard was actually a speaker and they were side by side in the spaces for uh, a good period of time. And before he could give his opinion on censorship and things like that, Kim.com, Kim.com threw him off the space. It has resulted in a huge controversy. Um, and uh, I guess let's really get into it. So you had Richard Hart was a regular on these Mario Nowful and Kim.com. They collaborated for these Twitter spaces. They've been getting a lot of big names. And Richard Hart was a regular. regular. Uh, whenever he came to the space, attendance probably jumped up by like six, 7,000 easily just because of the engagement, the high engagement in the Hex community. And uh, he has a very high percentage of his followers are real and uh, very engaging. So that is really what happened. So he's been doing them a lot of good. And then they got Elon Musk on and Elon Musk basically was speaking and they were talking about censorship and that was really the big opportunity people saw for Richard to give his input and, you know, form some inroad and connections with Elon Musk. And uh, that was really destroyed by Kim.com. So what what happened was Richard was obviously upset about it, understandably so. To most people, you are nothing more than something to be tricked into liking, following, and retweeting them. They're similar to trolls, except they want to punk you for engagement more than rage. Starve them. Make your own space. Be the narrative. So essentially, Richard's saying that, you know, we should not give these people attention. They're not good to me. Why should I be good to them? I've been giving them thousands and thousands of followers. I wouldn't... I, I am a personal, I personally am an example of that. If Richard wasn't in these spaces, I wouldn't be following Kim.com and I wouldn't be following uh, Mario Nowfall. So they've gotten thousands, tens of thousands of followers because of Richard Hart, because of his engagement, because people want to hear what he has to say. And then basically what happened was when Elon Musk came on, he got, he got thrown to the wolves essentially. So Kim.com explained uh, three reasons. He said, join Joins chat about censorship gets censored. So Kim.com tweeted, why did Richard Hart win delete this tweet? Wasn't he complaining about censorship? And Kim.com said the reasons why he was thrown off. He said, Elon said your fashion taste is terrible. He didn't want to be seen with you, not even on audio. Then he said, I like your eloquence and intellect, but you use every space to promote hex instead of letting your brilliance shine. Your fashion taste is terrible. Get help laughing emojis not the nicest response i think that's really what essentially prompted richard to 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 do this tweet um so i would say i guess that's the reason why he deleted the tweet was because he didn't want to engage with trolls essentially saying that uh kim.com is a troll so i guess yeah, this is a good meme over here. <laughs> you had Richard Hart, Elon Musk, and then Kim.com takes him away. So I guess my take on it is I don't really know if uh, if Kim.com is joking. Is it true that he didn't want to be – is it true that Elon Musk didn't want to be on the same uh, Twitter spaces as Richard Hart? That That is cool in and of itself that Elon Musk doesn't want to be seen with him. Because that means that Elon Musk knows who Richard Hart is. And that's very big. And that just shows you that Hex is emerging. Hex is emerging into that virality, into that uh, mainstream kind of thing. Because someone like Elon Musk, as big as Elon Musk, having heard of Richard Hart is already like something big. Uh, he didn't want to be seen with him. Maybe that's because he thinks he's a contra controversial uh, figure. I'm assuming it's not because of his fashion taste. But what's silly about him criticizing, like, uh, Elon allegedly and Kim.com saying his fashion taste, taste is terrible. It just shows that these people don't get it. It's not about the fashion. It's about sending a message. It's not about the fashion. It's about sending a message because until he was doing this fashion, these fashion things, nobody was paying attention to Richard Hart. Nobody cared. He was raising money for charity. He was writing self-help books. He created a token, a, a cryptocurrency that did a 10,000 X in under two years, which is, Extremely, extremely rare, rare in crypto. Only three other cryptos, I think, did it. 
were able to achieve that and nobody really paid attention. But then he started doing the outrage marketing. He started doing those uh, silly watches and outfits and things like that, which he on his own, on, on his own admission would say are silly, but it has helped him achieve, achieve that mainstream, you know, adoption, that mainstream, you know, clout from these big, these big uh, Twitter, Twitter accounts and content creators and influencers in the crypto space. So Kim.com does not get it. And uh, he, he obviously uh, actually thought that the fashion was for the sake of looking fresh, which sometimes it does, I have to admit. But yeah, I, I, it is supposed to be outrageous and, uh, and flashy to an extent just to attract your attention. And um, it's what got him on Fox News. I think it's what got him on a lot of these big shows. And it may be what has gotten him on the Kim.com thing. So I guess what I'd say is that he doesn't understand the uh, fashion taste. And Elon Musk, if he didn't want to be seen with Richard because maybe he thinks he's a scammer or whatever, it just goes to show how early you are. Because when it comes to these new technologies, these new innovative technologies, you know, people take them as scams because it's misunderstood. I think people said that the automobile was going to be used for crooks. And people said that the, uh, the telephone would be used for the mafia and thieves and things like that. And now people, and then people said with Bitcoin that, you know, it was used for, uh, for drugs and it was, uh, it was shady. It was, was, uh, it was, uh, it was just used for criminals and things like that. But really, it was an amazing technology that emerged that the rest of the world didn't understand. And I think that's really what's happening with Hex. And that's probably why Elon didn't want to be with him. But that's OK. Um, I think he'll the same way he was late with Bitcoin, he will be late to adopt Hex, uh, in my opinion. That's that's how I really see it playing out. I think just the world doesn't really understand trustless yield how it could be achieved um, through blockchain technology. And that's why people just essentially say he's a criminal. Um, and then he said, I like your eloquence and intellect, but you use every space to promote Hex instead of letting your brilliance shine. That is not true. I think he, he promotes Hex like minimally, minimally in these big Twitter spaces. And why does he get that standard? You know, I see Charles Hoskinson in these Twitter spaces. He mentions Cardano from time to time. I would say probably even less frequently than Richard Hart, but nobody cares. And uh, same thing with Ethereum, with Vitalik and Ethereum. Like when you're the founder of a cryptocurrency project and you're talking about crypto and you're comparing various cryptos to each other, you're inevitably going to mention your crypto. And you can't disaggregate Richard Hart from Hex. And he's saying, he's basically saying not to talk about it, which means he's kind of a gatekeeper, I guess. Um, he's essentially gatekeeping. It's not like Richard is just annoyingly repetitively saying, oh, hex.com, hex.com, go buy hex. Hex is the best. Like he's not doing that. He happens to mention it and that's because he's the founder and that's because you're on the topic of cryptocurrency. And that's what Kim.com is saying is simply not true. He's not grateful. Um, and this could potentially lead to Richard Hart not entering his spaces, which will lead to considerably, considerably less engagement on Twitter. Because if we really know what's up, if you really understand followers, uh, Kim.com doesn't have nearly the amount of, of, of followers as Richard Hart. Because yeah, he has 1 million compared to Richard Hart's, you know, almost 300,000. But most of them do not engage. Most of them are not, uh, they're not real. I mean, maybe they just happen to click the follow button like years ago, whatever. You just look at likes and retweets to Kim.com's average tweet or Mario Naufel's ad average tweet and compare that to Richard Hart, it's not even close. So um, if Richard wouldn't be going on his uh, on his Twitter spaces, that would be uh, that would be very bad for Kim.com and Mario Naufel. So I guess the question is, does that mean Richard Hart should not go on his Twitter spaces? Should Richard Hart stop going on the Twitter spaces? I say no. I say he should still go on because they do have big followings. Um, they do bring in huge names, huge names. I think I've never seen Richard get so much exposure to such big names so often as he has in these Twitter spaces. Um, and I haven't seen him get so many followers in such a short period of time as when he started going into these spaces. So while, yes, you could even argue that Richard benefits Kim.com and now full spaces 
more than now full and Kim.com benefit Richard Hart. I think it is mutually beneficial ultimately. Um, perhaps Kim.com should apologize. Uh, and now full should apologize. Perhaps maybe Richard should give him a timeout sort of thing. Um, and maybe come back, maybe let them see what it's like not having him in the spaces and, you know, make them want him back and make them essentially beg him to come back. Maybe that sort of thing, just to, show them that he deserves, he should get the respect he deserves. But I would hope, I mean, this is my opinion, Richard, maybe, you know, he, he's, if he doesn't want to go back, it's probably for a reason because he's had a good track record. But I do think it's important not to just, you know, isolate yourself. I think you should be interacting with other big content creators. I think I remember when he first got on these big spaces, I don't know if it was the first time, but it was, when he got in these big big spaces after FTX went down and you know everyone was giving him credit for being right he got like a good like 30,000 followers in like a very 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 short period of time so these spaces have been huge i think that's really the best way to get followers because when you're when you're engaging in your own space or you're engaging in a live stream you're really mainly talking to your audience which is important but it doesn't get your name out there as much as these big spaces where you have these huge names with their audience in there who've never heard of hex who never heard of pulse chain pulse x you know who never heard of these great truths in crypto that richard hart reveals and uh they find his points to be very profound and uh and insightful and they end up end up following him and perhaps getting hex because of that so i think it was very, very tragic what happened yesterday. I think it was very inappropriate and it was very ungrateful. But I think ultimately you got to cross over audiences, in my opinion, obviously. But uh, that's that's just the way I see it. But uh, I guess that's really enough enough for that. We got 31 watching. I really appreciate you guys watch, uh, taking the time to to really uh, to, to watch this uh show please if you're enjoying hit the like hit the subscribe button and then go to the description and just please give me your email you know so i could stay in touch with you because obviously this is not my platform and uh just in case you know something happens i don't have to start from scratch so i'd really really appreciate that but uh moving on moving on in the news uh we got what do we got we got uh, at KDP Crypto. If you're not following her, please do. She's an excellent account. Uh, Richard Hart, big Bitcoin calls are popping up in articles. Uh, influencers and media are realizing that there has been one man in the crypto space who's constantly right. And it's true. It's true. He's never had to change. He, he never had to change what he, how he was going about things. He, he mentioned it in his Twitter space last night, which you guys should check out his own Twitter space where he was uh, talking about the situation with Elon Musk that now full and Kim.com, they were doing other things. Uh, he said, he talks about now full being involved in these crypto ICOs, which pretty much never go right and things like that. And then he had to pivot and Kim.com also had to pivot and he's never had to pivot. And that's because he has an eye for the truth. He says it like it is. He does not withhold what is important to hear. So I guess there was crypto ticker. So now that Bitcoin reached 70,000, Richard, believed oh, so this is the original article richard believed that the entire market will crash and bitcoin specifically to ten thousand. speculation is so far spot on 95 percent. in fact bitcoin did breach its important support price and is expected to reach lower lows between ten thousand and twelve thousand. Oh, so this is recent article apologize remain on the lookout to see how things develop with fdx story and crypto prices there was another article. There are many theories that the crypto crash did not end yet. In fact, in a previous article, we did mention that the crypto winter is still looming over the crypto market. Bitcoin predictions are still eyeing the 10,000 price mark. A known figure in the crypto community who predicted the rise and fall of Bitcoin is Richard Hart. In fact, he predicted that Bitcoin price was going to crash from almost 70,000 to reach a low of 10,000. Bitcoin is currently sitting around 16,800. Nobody thought, nobody thought that Bitcoin was going to go back to 11,000. Nobody thought that. Uh, I remember when, especially when it made that new all-time high, that slightly, slightly higher high, it was supposed to be a given that Bitcoin was going 100K. And then people were saying 
100 k some people were saying, I think the Bitcoin maxis are really saying 350000 I remember there were a lot of these crypto articles that were talking about $350,000 Bitcoin and then a bear market low of maybe like 75000 50000 It was unheard of that it would go back below the previous all-time high from the previous uh, bear market. But, you know, time time is the greatest revealer of truth. And Richard was spot on about that, seemingly spot on. Question is, so do you wait for the 11 k to start you know, DCAing, start purchasing Hex and, uh, you know, other cryptos that you're interested in. I don't think that's a good idea. I think Richard Hart is right until he's wrong. He's not always going to be right. As, as smart as he is, and as much as he is the most right in crypto, he's not always going to be right. So if you believe a crypto is going to go up over time, I think you just got a dollar cost average. That's my opinion, not financial advice. Uh, I, I don't think it's good to wait for certain price points because even if it hits that 11K and let's say that is the bottom, you know, there's going to be, it's going to go, it might go right back up to these prices. And then you're just going to have really less time to DCA at these levels. Um, I think it's just be best if you believe in a crypto to just dollar cost average. I think uh, trying to time the market, especially when it's down so much is, is, is picking up pennies in front of freight trains. But that's just my opinion and not financial advice uh moving on what do we got we got <laughs> richard hart win uh richard hart uh obviously you should be following and i'm sure you are if you're uh if you're uh watching the stream but he said uh one day testnet v3 will be out then pulsechain.com and pulsex.com mainnet then glory <laughs> i remember what out was like waiting for what it, what it was like waiting for Hex to launch. Then all our dreams came true. Uh, love hearing him say that. Reinforces the fact that, you know, Pulse Chain will launch. It will launch, in my opinion. Not financial advice, but it's it's it, it, it will launch and PulseX will launch and people are very impatient. And it's not even helping launching, you know, during when prices are high because... It wouldn't have been helping launching when Bitcoin was at 40, 50,000 because it would likely have sent the price a lot lower because the market, the market moves in tandem, you know, prices move together. So starting at the bottom is good if you got in on the sacrifice. Actually, it might be better if you didn't get in on the sacrifice, you might want it to launch before a big crash <laughs> because then you could really scoop up those lower prices. Um, but it is what it is. I don't think he's waiting for the bottom. I think there were major, major changes that had to be made. There was a change from um, there was a change from uh, Binance Smart Chain fork to ETH 2.0 fork. That takes time. It's taking time. It'll come out when it's ready. Uh, that's that's the way I see it. But whatever. Let me hear how you see it. If you uh, let me hear from you in the comments how you see it. Is Richard Hart trying to time the market? So sorry about the leaf blowers, guys. I hope it's not really getting in the way that much. But uh, the show had to go on. I had to stream. And I had to stream at the time I said I'd stream. Moving on, we got Watcher.Guru. You could check out that website. They're pretty benevolent to Hex um, from how I see it. Uh, Watcher.Guru, which has on Twitter. You can follow them on Twitter. I believe they have over a million followers. Check that. Watcher. 1.6 million followers. This is a big news aggregator for uh, for crypto. So they just wrote an article two days ago about Hex. They're covering Hex, which is great. It's great to see Hex get some respect in uh, some sort of quasi-mainstream uh, uh, blogs for crypto and news aggregators for crypto. So it said, Hex spikes double digit. Why is it skyrocketing? Why is it skyrocketing in price today? Tons of ads. Ads just don't stop. Hex is attracting bullish sentiment this week after being on the back foot for two months straight. The crypto is up nearly 20% in the last seven days, giving decent returns to investors who took an entry position last week. Hex spikes. Hex spiked double digits on Friday, heading up 15% in the indices indexes. I don't know why they say indices. And it reached its weekly high of... 3.3 cents from 2.4 cents. Digital asset has a histor history of dramatically shooting up in price after a dip. And this time is no different. 
No different. That's right. Why is Hex up in double digits today? I feel like these these narratives, they, they really don't mean that much. I think you could basically make up your own reason. End of the day, it's just buyers and sellers. But uh, let's check out what they believe, why Hex is up in double digits today. First and foremost, Hex celebrated its third anniversary on Friday. That's true. And uh, if you haven't watched the Maddie Allen stream, I was on for the Hex third birthday stream. Making the community band together as one bunch. The anniversary is trending on Twitter, making the crypto market notice the double-digit spikes. Yes, Hex has been trending regularly on Twitter. 3,110 tweets. Richard Hart has been trending on Twitter. Pulse Chain has been trending on Twitter. Often I see the top 20 on, on Twitter, the top 20 trending uh have less tweets in the last 20 in the past 24 hours than hex would hex does at a given time that it's trending but it doesn't show up on the list i don't know why i think it's because hex is being gatekept as you can see from the kim.com tweet it doesn't look like elon musk has a positive has a positive uh view on richard so maybe that's why he's withholding it from the top 20 uh chart but who knows who knows all speculation everything's speculation so what was trending on Twitter? Also, Hex is up 15% as the crypto is experience a experiencing a large number of whales taking an entry position. That's big. Whales are on a buying spree Thursday and have combinedly purchased more than 43 million Hex tokens. Yeah, people were all complaining about that wallet address with 2 million Hex. You know, he's going to dump. It's going to go down forever. It's like, yeah, you could see someone on emergency on stake, two, I think it was 200 million worth of Hex. But you don't see whales scooping up. It was 43 million hex tokens. You don't see that happening before it happens. So yes, you can see potential sellers. It's harder to see potential buyers because there's no because the emergency end stake telegraphs sales. So yes, there are sellers, but there are also a lot of buyers. So that's why I say DCA if you believe in hex, not financial advice, do your own research. But uh the buying spree was a few hours apart from each other, making Hex gradually spike in price in the last 24 hours, closing to 1.3 million worth of Hex was purchased by individual whales. $1.3 million worth of Hex was purchased by individual whales. That's huge. I remember there was also, I think it was KDPLS uh, tweeted about Hex being in the top 20 or top, maybe top, might have been top five in in uh, in uh, whale purchases over on ethereum over a given period of time hex is getting recognition from whales whales are smart whales are ahead of the curb and uh the fact that they're loading up on hex and it's at entry positions meaning it's not from previous uh they're not whales because of hex they were they are whales and they are now purchasing hex so it's new onboard whales seemingly which is big also, trading volume has more than doubled in the past 24 hours is up and is up 123%. It is receiving a massive inflow of investments. If the trend continues, it could delete a zero by the end of the year. That would be big. That would mean it would go over 10 cents by the end of the year. Do you guys think that Hex is going to go over 10 cents by the end of the year? Um, maybe that'll depend on Pulse Chain launching and other things. Is Pulse Chain going to launch before the end of the year? What do you guys think? <laughs> In addition, a handful of investors have staked their token for a set period to earn passive income. Millions worth of X token are staked since Thursday, giving the crypto a boost in the indices. You see Hex Whale. Follow at Whale Hex, by the way. Awesome, awesome Twitter account. So 1.2 million, 27 million Hex just staked for 1,400 days. That's crazy. Third anniversary celebration celebrations, massive well entries, and staking the crypto is what made Hex spike double digits on Friday. I guess you could say that. That's fair. Um, that is that is definitely a fair assessment, in my opinion. So you see more people buying and staking Hex every single day on Hex Daily Stats. You see whales coming in. You see. Pretty much, you know, every metric going up, more engagement, more followers by Richard Hart, uh, more followers in the Telegram, you know, more days of Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X trending on Twitter. Um, the only thing that's going down is the price and the price of everything is people have to remember that we are in a bear market. The market moves in tandem. Everything's tied together. You know, doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters to an extent, but, you know, you could have all the good news you want. But like when the market is dumping, 
you know, generally, you know, Hex is going to experience some dumpage. So uh, that's what I'd say about that. And I think people are always quick to find a scapegoat. I think the biggest skip scapegoats are probably are probably the outrage marketing and Pulse Chain launch delays. Like Pulse Chain hasn't launched yet. So so uh, that's why we're dumping. And that's why Hex can't make new all-time highs. I think that's that's a cop out. I think it's just a bear market. Metrics are going up. Adoption's going up. Engagement's going up. And, you know, whale wallets holding heck, hex are going up. So uh, that's really my opinion on that. Uh, we got 36 watching. If you are enjoying, please like this, this video and subscribe. It really, really helps. And please click the description in the email below and just put your email down. I will not sell your email, the email list to uh, third parties. You know, I'm not going to spam you. Everything's private. It just helps me stay in touch with you. Would really appreciate it. But if not, just like and subscribe. And if you can't do that, I still appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, really. So uh, let's check out further news. Wanted to, you know, just go a little bit on the um, on uh, the Genesis situation, the digital currency group. That could be one of those things that could bring Bitcoin down to 11K. Uh what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the digital currency group is going down? That would be huge. They they are uh, Grayscale and Genesis. So FT.com says crypto broker Genesis owes Winklevoss exchange 900 exchanges customers 900 million. That's very big. I think it's Gemini, Gemini Earn. I don't think it's the regular Gemini. So New York-based Gemini is trying to recover funds after FTX failure plunged markets into turmoil. So Digital Asset Trading Group Genesis and its parent company, Digital Currency Group, owe customers of the Winkle, Winklevoss twins, Richard calls them the Winklevi twins, crypto exchange $900 million as the collapse of FTX reverberates across the market. New York crypto exchange Gemini run by Taylor and Cameron Winklevoss is trying to recover the funds after Genesis was wrong footed by last month's failure of Sam Bankman Fried's FTX crypto group, according to people familiar with the matter. Gemini bids to recover the funds underscored how the crypto lending market where investors lend out their coins in exchange for high rate of returns sits at the center of the industry's credit crunch. Genesis is the main partner of Gemini Earn program, where retail investors lend out their coins in exchange for a fixed stream of returns. Eh, not so fixed, is it, huh? Gemini halted withdrawals from the scheme last month after Genesis said unprecedented market turmoil meant, quote unquote, unprecedented market turmoil meant it did not have the sufficient liquidity to make good on all of its redemption requests. Gemini has now formed a creditor committee to recoup the funds from Genesis and its parent digital currency group. The people said Gemini and Genesis declined to comment. So it says, this is important. It says that Genesis has been scrambling to raise funding and hired investment banking boutique Mollis and Co. to help it explore all possible options, according to the people familiar with the situation. Creditor company is in negotiations with both Genesis and digital currency group, the parent group of Genesis, which is run by billionaire Barry Silbert, the people said. DG, DCG was founded in 2015 as one of the biggest investors in the crypto industry. It was valued at $10 billion last year by investors, including Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund, GIC, Google's venture arm Capital G and SoftBank, and its subsidiaries included uh, Genesis Investment Manager Grayscale. So it says... Digital currency group itself owes money to subsidiary Genesis. These intercompany loans have complicated the picture for creditors. So basically you had digital currency group needed, uh, uh, Genesis needed a bailout because they were short in cash uh, because, because, um, because of the FTX thing. Just shows that everything's really, you know, intertwined. And then digital currency group didn't have the liquidity to provide it. So they basically gave them an IOU and said, we will pay it back by this time. They're clearly short on cash. There's a liquidity crunch. And then you have, uh, and then you have Gemini's coming to Genesis and saying, Hey, we have customers who deposited funds there and we want our money back. And Genesis is 
doesn't have money. Digital Currency Group doesn't have any money to bail Genesis. They're looking for someone to really bail them out. Is that going to happen? I don't know. I mean, the clock is ticking and people want their money back. I think it's only inevitable. If they can't get that money that they're going to go under. And you have to factor in, you know, with these uh, raised interest rates, these raised interest rates, uh, it's very hard to find money. Money is more scarce, you know, to fight inflation. Money has become more scarce. Comes back to uh, a very smart man named Richard Hart. Don't know if you heard of him. Said that not your keys, not your coins. And trying to, you know, deposit money into these lending platforms to get a bit, of, little bit of yield is picking up pennies in front of freight trains. So the clock is ticking here. I know CZ has, CZ uh, of Binance has created a, uh, he's made a, a fund with like $1 billion to bail out these, uh, these crypto companies, maybe to buy them up, these, uh, these struggling crypto companies. Maybe he'll give them, maybe he'll uh, throw them a, throw them a bone for, uh, for part ownership, you know, for, for equity in the company. Because if digital currency group goes down, that would be really, really bad. If people are, you know, speculating that if it goes down, then Grayscale would maybe have to liquidate its Bitcoin on the open market to pay back depositors. That would be pretty bad. <laughs> it's not even really funny, but yeah. I think it, it is really looking like the pressure is on for digital currency group. And then if digital currency group, group goes down, does that mean that Ge Gemini goes down? Gemini saying it's only Gemini earn, but who knows these days? I mean, it's, it's just, you kind, kind of have to take them for their word. That's really what it comes down to. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that, what do you guys think the most likely scenario will be for, uh, for Bitcoin really having that next leg down? Is it Tether? Is it Coinbase? Is it Genesis? Is it the digital currency group? Is it Gemini? I think it's looking right now most likely is digital currency group because every other one, it's very speculative. It's very, it's like, for example, Coinbase, people are saying they're, they're insolvent mainly based off the fact that they refuse an audit. You know, they, uh, they, they, they they don't want to uh, pick up the, the hood and Coinbase would say that it's for security concerns. It's complicated. Do we, are they telling the truth or not? I don't know, but you know, the, the, the pressure is not as big. It's not as big as when you have also Tether. It's like there's no pressure, really. I mean, they have been providing liquidity for people that uh, they have been, you know, paying people that they have been letting people cash out, you know, one for one. So they have the money for that. There's there's no serious, you know, full core press. But Genesis is really in distress. There's there's full core press. People in Gemini earn the Winklevoss twins. They want their money back for their depositors. And uh, the clock is ticking on the uh, on the loan that that uh, digital currency group, the, the, the promise that digital currency group had basically for them to for them to uh, pay, give them some sort of <laughs> to, to, to pay back the, the loan that Genesis owns. You know, I think it was by March. It's over. I don't know. The clock is ticking for them. They're scrambling to find uh, creditors who would you know, give them some cash or investors who would give them some liquidity so they could, uh, you know, patch things up. But uh, they're looking like the ones scrambling. But you know what? At this point, everything's just all bets are off. Everything's unpredictable. Nobody saw FTX going down until maybe two days before it happened. So who knows? Who knows? But uh, we got 44 watching. Please like this video if you're enjoying, hit the subscribe button. And if you please can just take a second to put your email down in the list in the description, I would really, really appreciate it. But in any case, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching and we're gonna go take a look at your chats and uh, see what you guys are talking about. So we got Entheosapien again. He thinks we could hit it. And nice to catch you live too. We got XRP Isaac 589. Change that XRP to hex, please, Isaac. XRP is trash. Um, but we love Isaac. We love XRP Isaac. Thanks for tuning in. Elon said he didn't like Richard Hart's fashion. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You could check out earlier on the stream. I I I showed you, the, you know what? I'll show you the screenshot right now. Just because 
he deleted the tweet, but uh, yeah, Kim.com said, Elon said your fashion taste is terrible. He didn't want to be seen with you, not even on audio. So, I mean, the question is if, if, uh, if uh, Kim.com is really, is really trolling about Elon Musk, maybe he just made that up or maybe he's telling the truth. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see why he would make that up. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think he'd make that up. But who knows? Exactly. Richard would never dress like that, but nobody cared. It's true. It's true. I remember when he was dressing in the in the hex t-shirts and cargo shorts. Nobody cared. Unsung hero. Thanks for tuning in, regular viewer. We appreciate you. Elon is a market market maker. He can easily pump hex to the moon simply by acknowledging Richard Hart. That is true. That is true. We saw that with, with Dogecoin. Uh, that is true. The word essentially is <laughs> Am I saying it too much? Sorry, bro. Just how I talk. Thomas Winter said, hello. Hello, Thomas. Thanks for tuning in. Ben Dubard. Ben Dubard says, what's up, Furu? What's up, Ben? You guys know Ben Dubard. We stream together very often. Uh, you could check out his channel. We had an awesome interview. Me and Ben, we were talking, uh, we were talking about FTX. We were talking about Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, uh, a lot of things in crypto. I forget exactly, but that was really, really one of my better interviews. And I appreciate that, Ben. So guys, if you're not subscribed to Ben Dubar's channel, please go to Ben Dubar's channel and hit the subscribe and watch my interview with him. Hey, Ben, everyone subscribe and hit the like button. Yes, please. And please, 42 watching, please just take a second to just put your email down. I'm really just so I can stay in touch with you. You know, no spam. It's all private. Ben Ledesma says, Richard Hart marketing still making waves all good. Very true. Very true. You know, the metrics speak for themselves. The metrics really speak for themselves. RH marketing is not working. Hey, Pac-Man, why not? I mean, why not? It's just the price dropping. Is that is that why? Because uh, the metrics, you look at Hex Daily stats every day. Holder Staker is going up. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, I appreciate you watching, as always. Always good insight in the comment section and stuff. Dressing up like Elton John. <laughs> like Elton. I don't know. It's certainly catching people's attention. But uh, foolish. I only sacrificed for Pulse X. Mix the pulse sacrifice. You mean missed? Missed the pulse sacrifice, but I'm still feeling pretty good about my pulse X sacrifice. Plan on hodling the majority of my pulse X till at least 2025. Yeah, that's, it sounds like a good decision to me. Not financial advice. Do your own research. I also missed the pulse chain sacrifice. Um, but think about it. Think about how much you sacrificed for pulse X and. Let's say you had money in hex or ETH or you know ERC twenties that weren't stable coins that you were holding that you decided to sacrifice. How much would they be worth now if you didn't sacrifice? And you know there is no price, there is no volatility because Pulse Pulse X isn't out yet. So essentially, he unintentionally saved you from the bear market to an extent is the way I see it, in my opinion. Like that's I would I I got locked in at a way higher rate than. Had I not sacrificed and and maybe had the sacrifice been been now, but been been uh, been later, meaning when the prices were already down. So I think it's a really good thing. It's a really good thing that pretty much at, at the top of the, the bull market, Richard gave you the opportunity to lock in a higher rate than you otherwise would have had. Pac-Man, yep, holding until 2025 highs and out. Hey, I don't know, uh, I don't know uh, encourage timing the market, but definitely, uh definitely taking profits is not a bad idea. But Scam Bankman fraud. Oh, I never heard that one before. <laughs> oh, you got to find a better one than that. And you need a better, you need a better logo. You got to get rid of that XRP, XRP Isaac 589. It's not going to 589. And Ripple dumps XRP on you. Join Hex, always never sold. You get yield. You get to time lock. Just superior, in my opinion, not financial advice. We still love you, Isaac. Appreciate you tuning in. Good content. Keep it going. Thank you, Spike. Appreciate that. I appreciate the kind words. Pac-Man, Richard Hart needs to wake up and <laughs> enough with this BS. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that. 
Um, listen, I don't know. I think I you got to explain to me what makes you say it's not working because all I see is price depreciation, but that's that's the feature of a bear market. Tails seven, never seen you before. Welcome. Uh, Hex price performance plummeted when Richard started doing that crap. That's not true. That's not true. I saw him on the Kiko News interview. Um, and I think it was in the teens. That was the first time I really, I mean, I heard of him and I heard of Hex. It was on my watch list, but the first time I really got to hear him speak, he had those watches. He had those, uh, those, uh, outrageous outfits. He was wearing a, a Louis Vuitton leather jacket and things like that. And the price did more than a double from them. It's, it's price performance is down coinciding, coinciding with the price performance of pretty much every altcoin being down 90, 95%. So, I mean, you know, you could really make a case that that outrage marketing isn't working. The, the case would be made if the entire crypto market's up, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, making new all-time highs. Hex isn't. Then I'd be a little bit more worried, but not worried. Crypto markets are down. We're at peak FUD right now. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, that's the reason. But uh, that's just my opinion, not financial advice. Oh, you agree with that? Oh, man. He's getting the wrong attention from SEC when he does this. Okay. I wish he goes back to old RH times. Hey, I know a lot of people, I understand the frustration. A lot of people want him to go back to uh, the old Richard Hart, so to speak. But the way I see it, um, and I keep repeating this really, but the way I see it is that is that he is facing challenges that other founders aren't facing. Like the gatekeeping was happening before he started doing the outrage marketing. I think the outrage marketing is really a way to sick, circumvent the gatekeeping. So why is Hex really, why is Hex really uh, gate kept more than any, any other crypto? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You look at the centralized exchanges. They, they, first of all, are affiliated with all these uh, content creators. All these, uh, you know, they're they're affiliates of all these big crypto YouTubers and things like that, right? And they are they are affiliated with exchanges like you look and, and, and big crypto companies like CoinDesk is affiliated with digital currency group, which is affiliated with Gemini. I mean, they do business together. So they don't want to list hex. They don't want to cover hex because hex is the antithesis of trading. They want high volume trading because they make money from fees. They get fees. If you make money or lose money, people just buy and don't sell and just lock it up and promise to not sell for five, 10, 15 years. Then, uh, then is that profitable for Coinbase, Gemini, um, Binance? It's not profitable for them. They want coins that you could really trade a lot. So they're going to gatekeep. So you need to circumvent that gatekeeping. You need to find, find a way around it. And it's been very, very effective. I mean, I know the price is down. <laughs> I'm not trying to be insensitive. It sucks. I bought the top. Listen, I'm not a hex OG or anything. But I think if you really step back and you see the big picture, it's working. There's more holders and stakers every day. There's more followers on Richard Hart's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, every single day. There, Hex is getting is trending like every other day. I see it trending. So I mean, I, it's I think it's working. I think it has really circumvented the gatekeeping to a very very large extent. And it sucks. It sucks when he's when he's I I I, I understand the frustration, Pac Man. Um, in tail seven because you do see the price is plummeting and then you see richard walking around you know he's walking out of uh, louis vuitton with these big bags and things like that but i mean do you not trust the plan i mean do you think that richard doesn't know what he's doing i mean he's had a good track record of really um uh, of really proving the doubters wrong and knowing something that other people didn't know so do you think that this time is any different i don't think it's any different but uh i don't know i mean it is possible it's different but from what I see, it's hard really to make the case. Richard Hart is a smart guy overall, but yes, all, overall, yes, but good to tone it down moving forward because Pulse is coming out. Hex, all, et cetera, should do well. All right. I like the optimism. I like the optimism. Um, and I appreciate the input. You're, you, you've you been very good. So uh, and then we got Daniel Nice Jadeka Furu. Legend. Oh, thanks, man. I wouldn't say I'm a legend, though. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, 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 I learned from legends. How about that? So maybe that's why I could come across as that, because I do watch a lot of Matty Allen and Hexologist and obviously Richard Hart. So back when all the haters got wrecked, Richard Hart says how it is. No BS with him. 100% agree. Yeah. 
I've been watching RH since 2014. Yeah, yeah. And has he not done you well? Has he not done you well? I mean, I think I think he's known what he's doing. I'm sure I'm sure you're very well off if you've been watching since 2014. Um, we got 48 watching. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm here every single day except for Saturday at 12 p.m. live streaming. Hope you guys could tune in every day. Uh, covering Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and the broader crypto markets. And please, if you can, just, just uh, go in the description and click the link to the email list. Just put your email down. Please do that. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, everything's kept confidential. I'm not selling your information or anything. Just a way for me to stay in touch with you. And Pac-Man, the final comment says, he is great. Zero BS. Yes, he is great. He is great. Like the positive words now, and I always appreciate you tuning in. All right, so I guess that's about it for today. Please tune in tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time, and please tune in to RH Max. I will be on the RH Max show at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I'm very excited. We are going to be talking the Richard Hart ecosystem, broader, broader crypto news, and everything else. Richard Hart Max, please like and subscribe to his channel, RH Max, at RH Max on Twitter. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Um, click the like button, click the subscribe, click the email list in the link and just put it down, put the email down, and follow me on Twitter at Furu Finance. Really appreciate you guys. See you guys tomorrow at 12 p.m. and have a great rest, rest of your weekend. Bye.